So a couple months ago, I made an in-depth analysis on the 0.70 beta of Dead Rising, in which I showcased just how much more development was done on the game since the previous, earlier beta that we know as 0.50. People really seem to enjoy this video because it showcases the sheer amount of work Capcom had done to the game in just roughly two months. But it also showcased just how incomplete 0.70 still was. But I realized that while I put the spotlight on 0.70 for a very good reason, after that video came out, I moved on to other video projects, and that I had accidentally brushed over the next beta, which came after 0.70, E3 2006. Now, much like what we saw in the previous video, when E3 loads up, we see it also uses an ESRB screen, which Final does not. This one is actually rated, however, unlike 70, which was still rating pending. So once we're in the main menu, we can see that this build actually says that it's indeed for E3 with this E3 version text, which is pretty cool. Now in the main menu, you'll notice there isn't many options in here. Hitting start game will open the hard drive selector and then there will only be 72 hour mode. Even if you load a game save from the final game, it'll allow you to see game save data and even allow you to carry from where you left off, but overtime mode and infinity mode aren't selectable, which kinda sucks. So if we skip ahead to the intro photography scene, we can see that it's still pretty unfinished, like we last saw it in 0.70. In that build, we noted that there was a flash icon, but the camera film indicator was missing. Well, in E3 2006, both the flash icon and film indicator are missing. Also, you'll notice that there are PP bonus stickers in this cutscene for some reason. And what's funny is that by simply aiming the camera to the left, you can pretty much photograph all of them in one shot. Now, once we're in-game, you won't notice too many visual differences, but there are a few pretty major ones. Like for some reason, the text that displays on the HUD is using an extremely blurry font. I have no idea why. And in this build, the pause menu is much closer to the finalized version compared to how we last saw it in 70. However, it's still unfinished. The text at the top still says Dead Rising instead of pause menu, which is pretty funny. And there are a few differences in various menus, such as in the options page, you'll see that a couple functions are missing in here. Also, in the notebook menu, for some reason there's this extra scoop slot, but I'm not exactly sure what it was used for. When we get into the security room, we can see that the ability to save the game has been turned off, which makes sense because they didn't want people to save in this build because it's basically a demo. So they just wanted people to play for 15 minutes and then leave. The collision in the security room is still fairly early, however it's a lot more polished compared to how we last saw it in 70. You can no longer stand on top of the saving bench, however you can still stand on the green bed in the computer room. Mostly all of the glitchy collision issues from 70 have been patched out now. Frank's camera is still fairly early because for some reason you spawn with 24 images compared to the 34 that was in 0. 0.70. Also, just like the builds before, there is still a zero before the actual film counter. You'll notice the camera flash icon is removed now, however when you take a photo, it still flashes a bright light, which is really cool. Also, when you aim the camera at a PP bonus sticker, you'll see that the camera icon shows up, but there's no percentage counter at all. The security room still has this one random metal shielding plate over the wires. This model has been here since pretty much the beginning of the game's development. Here we can see it in 0.50 even, but in E3 2006, they gave it proper collision, so you could walk over it much easier, unlike in the earlier builds where Frank would actually get stuck on it. Amazingly, in this build you can still perform the over-the-shoulder camera from any point in the game, even during the entrance plaza introduction. This was probably the last build to allow you to do this, however. Now, this build no longer has the debug menu that we saw in 0.50 and 70, however, E3 
2006 does have a single debug function. If you hold both the triggers and both the bumpers for about two seconds, this guide dialog will appear, allowing you to return to the title screen. Now this is obviously so that the developers who were running the demo at E3 could return to the title screen for the next person in line to play the demo. When we get to Entrance Plaza, we can see that the survivors now have their names on top of their heads, and we can no longer push them around like we could in 0.70. The water reflection shader in the pond is still really early, however, and actually causes the game to lag like crazy. After meeting with Barnaby, we can see that the survivors do load in this time, unlike in 0.70 where they were just missing. But in this build, the survivors act quite differently compared to the final game, because some of them simply refuse to die. We can see that Verlene spawns on top of the advertisement board, so literally no zombies can even get her. Also, Brian is much more efficient with his shotgun, so it's very rare that he actually dies. Also, there's a rumor spreading that in E3 2006 you can save the intro survivors, which I also believed. However, you can't, so case closed. <laughs> Also, Frank no longer uses those early and much better facial animations that he had in 0.70. Sadly, now in E3, Frank has been given his final potato animations. Kind of sad. So, moving on ahead, we can see that Jeff doesn't have his golf club, not exactly sure why. Also, if you kill survivors in this build, their name doesn't disappear, but it pretty much did this in every previous build. Here you can see that in 0.50. Now, while I already mentioned this in the previous 0.70 showcase, here we can see that E3 still uses that metal door in the warehouse, which the final game does not. When a weapon is near its breaking point, we can see that it still flashed red like all the earlier builds of Dead Rising. However, this was definitely the last build to do that. The final game just flashes the icon on and off. I noticed that in Paradise Plaza, the quick loader to Wonderland that you unlock from saving Greg is always unlocked by default, and strangely it uses the weapon icon instead of the normal interaction icon. The water in the small pond in Leisure Park is for some reason a completely blue mirror. The water doesn't ripple or anything, it's a flat mirror. I'm not sure how they managed to leave this in. If you hit glass with a melee object, you can see that it actually cracks the glass first before it completely breaks into pieces. This is something that Dead Rising has been doing since the earliest builds and it's pretty cool. The hunk of meat that the zombies would carry was simply called a severed arm, which is much more to the point and obvious. And finally, last but not least, when you encounter Barnaby in the entrance plaza with Brad, after that cutscene ends, you are shown this coming soon screen, which then automatically returns you to the title screen. And there you have it. Obviously, the E3 2006 beta isn't nearly as interesting as the older builds of Dead Rising I've shown off, but I think E3 2006 still deserves a spotlight. I can't really make one for the previous beta because it's very close to the final game, but you can expect to see many more videos documenting all four of these builds because I still have many more things to show off, but of course, until then, thanks for watching and as always, subscribe for more.